This is a short video explaining what you get when you purchase our control of non-conforming material procedure, which is SYS 023. It's a short procedure, but it comes with two other documents. One is your non-conforming material log, and the other one is the form that you would actually document each non-conforming material item or group of items on before you put it in quarantine. Let me share my screen and I'll show you what, what I mean by each of these documents. So here's the non-conforming material report. Every time you have non-conforming material, you would go into the log, you would record the next sequential number, you would put that log number on the top of this. So if I were gonna do that right now, I would put in 21 for the year and then the next sequential number because we're starting a new quality system, it'd be number one. And you can delete the draft from these. We use drafts, draft numbers D1, D2, D3, D4, to keep track of the different versions that we've created at Medical Device Academy. But when you approve the first version, you delete the drafts and every revision you make would be A, B, C, D. This is only a two page form, but it automatically will get longer as you fill in more information. You put in your name, the date you initiated, what the product is, what the lot number is or serial number, a description of what's wrong with it, an evaluation that you've done uh, to determine what the, um, is actually the problem and what may have caused it that might lead to the need for a corrective action or not, how you're gonna contain the non-conforming non -conforming material product and what the dis disposition will be. Either it'll be scrap it, return it to a vendor, use as is, or rework it. And if there's a rework of it, you're gonna also have to approve a procedure identifying what the rework is and what controls you're gonna put in place for reinspection and the like. Um, we also have approval of the um, non-conforming material report. Different approvals and signatures might be required for different types of dispositions. There's a risk assessment if you're doing use as is or rework. And then if there's a kappa, you can cross reference to the kappa as well. And then on the last page, there's a closure of this non-conforming material record before you file it away. Let me share the next document here. That's our actual log sheet. So in this, you would just keep on adding the next sequential number, 21-002-003-004, and indicate what the product is, what the issue is, uh, the date, the initiator, the date closed. And this al log allows you to keep metrics for control of non-conforming materials and could also be used to um, help you evaluate suppliers because all your non-conforming product from suppliers would be put on this log as well. And then for our last document, the actual procedure, here's the non-conforming product procedure. It's um, five pages long. You'll notice in here, there's no reference to the QSR. Um, there's no reference to um, the MDR either. So yes, this meets ISO 1345 2016 requirements. Yes, this meets the requirements in the QSR. Yes, this meets the requirements in the MDR, but there's no specific requirement in the MDR to have this procedure or any required changes because it went from the MDD to the MDR. Um, the, the requirements for a non-conforming material procedure have not changed with the new European regulations. And the ISO 1345 uh, regulations in 2016, it says right here in the revision history that this procedure is compliant with that. Um, it indicates what the different roles and responsibilities would be, such as an MRB, a material review board, a quality uh, person, an accounting person for scrap, engineering for use as is and rework and purchasing for any return to vendor. And then we have how you uh, conduct the procedure step-by-step, step. then rework management specifically, monitoring and measuring of non-conforming material, training and retraining on this procedure, risk management is we apply a risk-based approach to all our procedures. And then at the very end, we have records. So you'd have your record of non-conforming material and your log sheet. And one other thing that you should do is you should, if you're implementing an electronic quality system, you should indicate the location where the electronic records are gonna be located. Or if you're using a paper-based system, indicate what the paper-based location is gonna be for storage of the records. So that's it for this particular procedure. If you have any other further questions, please let us know. And I hope that was helpful. Have a great day.